Whoa, oh my goodness. Okay, no, this is one of the craziest things that you could go out there and suggest is an option here. I actually saw this pop up on my Twitter timeline like two days ago, and I was like, come on, that's ridiculous. Why would we ever make a video about that? Why are people talking about this? Why are people linking the Vancouver Canucks and the Montreal Canadiens in trade talks regarding this player? It was too outrageous and too crazy for me to go out there and even think about making a video about it. And then we saw Frank Saravelli. Because earlier this morning on the Halford and Bruff show, Saravelli was a guest and you had yourselves a very interesting segment on the broadcast wherein Saravelli spoke out about the Vancouver Canucks and potential trade targets. There was one name in particular that he brought up that we're going to be talking about in today's video. Let's talk about Montreal Canadiens defenseman Mike Matheson. Now, before we go into my own personal thoughts about this, let's get into the scoop here. So the link in the description is going to take you to the Halford and Bruff podcast, which is just the audio from the radio show from earlier this morning, wherein Sarah Vailey joins as a guest and talks about the Canucks. To help us out with this Mike Matheson thing, we're going over onto Canucks News Summary's Twitter account because they have been so, so amazing at transcribing and writing out what it is these Vancouver Canucks-related audio hits bring. Here is the recap of the Sarah Valley interview on Halford and Bruff. There's a whole bunch of stuff going over here. He talks about JT Miller, he talks about Marcus Pedersen, he talks about David Yerichek and the Bruins, but he also talks about Mike Matheson here. Frank Saravelli says that the best fit that he has on his own trade board for the Canucks is Mike Matheson. It's pure speculation, though. Saravelli also doesn't think that people recognize how good he has been over the last 100 games. The Habs don't want to move him, but his value is higher than it will ever be. And so these are the three notes that are written about with Mike Matheson. To add on to the how good he's been over the last 100 games angle, there actually was a new article published by Sarah Valley on dailyfaceoff.com. Pedersen, Ristolainen, Provorov headlined the first trade targets board of 24-25. This was from earlier this morning, and part of the reason Sarah Valley was even on Halford and Bruff was to start talking about the promo for this and, you know, promote the article, just talk about some of the names that are listed there. If we scroll down to the number... What is it? The number nine pick on the trade board for Daily Faceoff. Frank Saravelli writes this about Mike Matheson. 30 years old, left-handed defenseman, 13 points in 19 games. He's got $4.875 million as the AAV with one year left. The scoop reads this. Given the thin nature of their blue line and their need to better support young defensemen assimilating into the lineup, the Canadians really don't want to move Mike Matheson but they may not have a choice, given that his value will arguably be its highest before this deadline. Did you know Mike Matheson was ninth amongst NHL defensemen scoring last year with 62 points? He moves the puck, is comfortable playing the right side, and actually defends better than he's given credit for when proper expectations are set. What the Canadians will have to weigh is, they don't really need any more picks, they need more tangible help. And so Sarah Valley wrote that about Mike Matheson. Then he went over onto the radio on Sportsnet 650 and talked about Matheson and the Canucks. And I just wanted to say this right here. So Mike Matheson for me, as a player, obviously he's a great player. And I have no choice but to say that. I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan second, Vancouver Canucks fan first, and for the past few years I've always been getting Mike Matheson on my fantasy team because not only does he produce points, but he also plays some pretty alright defense too with shot blocks and physical play. But Mike Matheson for me is a no-go, one million percent, for the Vancouver Canucks. Not necessarily because his skill set wouldn't be necessary, or that his skill set wouldn't add value to the team, but because of the most petty reason possible. I wanted to turn your attention to a video that we made on this YouTube channel back in 2018-2019. Take a look at this. Do you remember this commentary that we made? We spoke about the Vancouver Canucks playing in a game against the Florida Panthers, and we discussed how Elias Pettersson was slammed to the ice by Mike Matheson. He was playing for the Florida Panthers at that time. Elias Pettersson embarrassed Matheson on that play by dangling the pants off of him, and then Matheson later on body slammed Petey into the ice, injuring the Vancouver Canucks superstar rookie player. Now, back in that 2018-19 season, Mike Matheson had 27 points in 81 games and 27 points in 75 games the next season, so he wasn't really, like, the best player out there, 
but he was a part of this Florida Panthers team as a mobile puck moving guy with a very strange physical element that he would bring out once in a while especially to guys like Pedersen. Mike Matheson made himself public enemy number one in Vancouver for a good few years because of that body slam to Elias Pedersen. And while it is true that I think his profile is amazing, and if the Vancouver Canucks were to add a player like Matheson, it would be great, I personally do not even want to think about Matheson, the guy, going over to Vancouver because of that history. You know how Oilers fans were complaining over and over again when Brandon Manning found himself on the Edmonton Oilers just a few years after he he had ended Connor McDavid's rookie season? Yeah, that happened back in 20-whatever it was. Brandon Manning isn't even in the NHL anymore, but there was a brief period where he was suiting up for Edmonton, teaming up with Connor McDavid, the guy whom he ended his rookie season. Like, I don't think a lot of fans who are newer fans realize this because that was like a decade ago, but Connor McDavid didn't win the Calder. He didn't win the Rookie of the Year. That honor went to Artemi Panarin. Even though Panarin, you could say, was the inferior player to McDavid, the fact that McDavid's season was cut short because Brandon Manning ended his year? It was a really big deal. And Manning eventually found himself onto the Oilers a few years later, much to the dismay of many fans. If Mike Matheson found himself on the Vancouver Canucks, it would be the same thing. Maybe not to the same magnitude, because Pedersen still won the Calder in his rookie year, fortunately. But Mike Matheson and the history there, it would be so weird to make that connection, you know? Have these two guys linked in that sort of way. Anyways... My own personal subjective feelings aside, Mike Matheson would be a good pickup for the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, he's a left-handed guy, he can play top power play, he can play like 25 to 28 minutes a night if you really pushed him. That's kind of what the Montreal Canadiens have been doing the past little while too. He had had himself a 62-point campaign last year, he's on pace for about 56 points this year, which is okay, I would say, considering the fact that a few Canadians guys haven't been producing as much, and the fact that the power play just kind of looks all over the place this season. Not to mention the fact that also, Montreal would need to find a way to move on from Mike Matheson eventually. There's a reason Sarah Valley puts Matheson's name on the daily face-off trade board, because essentially everything that you're tasking Mike Matheson to do you kind of hope that Lane Hudson is one day going to be able to take over those roles. Because even for now, I think, a lot of Canadians fans would debate that Lane Hudson deserves a chance to show what he's worth on the first power play unit instead of giving it all to Mike Matheson. Right now, Matheson is being poised as that number one D-man, which is okay because he had 60 points last year, he was great, but Lane Hudson is right there in the shadow of Matheson, waiting for Matheson's departure and being able to take over that spot soon after. So, why not send Matheson to Vancouver, a team that could use a player that can play on the right side? Matheson can do that. A guy who could a guy who could maybe provide some more offense, and a team that may be able to use it. I'm not going to say the Canucks are desperate for another left-handed puck-moving defenseman, because they already have Hughes, Hronik, and Eric Bronstrom. Those are three out of the six guys that can produce some good offensive hockey. But having another one of Mike Matheson wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you wanted to, I don't know, diversify those minutes, play... Matheson with Susie and have Bronstrom with Myers or something, have Matheson as a really good offensive element on the second pairing, even though you can say the presence of Matheson would sort of diminish what Eric Bronstrom's role could be on the power play. It is kind of confusing when you think about it like that, because if you have four offensive guys, Hughes, Hronik, Matheson, and Bronstrom, one of these guys is going to get removed from the power play because he can't move Quinn off the top. You probably are not going to move Hronik from the second, and then you have yourselves the other guy, unless you wanted to load it up with three D-men, which I don't think is really an idea that's worth thinking about. I mean, maybe you can have Bronstrom as a winger. Have him there so that he can use his shot. Okay, no, that's a ridiculous idea. Let's not dive into that. But ultimately, the Canadians would need to get a lot in return to trade Matheson away as well because he is technically the best defenseman on the team. There would need to be some tangible assets that can help the team out right now, not necessarily prospects that are three, four, five years out and a draft pick or two. If the Montreal Canadiens were to be interested in a Tom Volander, for example, from BU in the NCAA, Vancouver's first-round prospect from a few years ago, I actually think that'd be a pretty okay deal. It's just, 
is that value really aligned there? Who really knows? Vancouver, if you get a player that's like Matheson out of a Tom Villander, he develops into a player that's like Matheson, then I think you're happy. So would you be okay to sacrifice a few years of development and fast forward into the future a little bit? Is this even an idea worth considering, or am I just completely out to lunch? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Frank Saravelli's Mike Matheson Vancouver Connect suggestion. I hope you enjoyed this British Astral 9 and bye. <laughs>